Hiya guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we have for you today another review. And this is another kit from the Ukraine, and uh, this is now the Models of it. Uh, Models of it are the manufacturer who make the, the massive AN124, the uh, Ruslan, um, in 70 second scale, and the even more massiver, massive, massive, massiveness, uh, AN225, the uh, Maria. So um, you've seen me review those. If you haven't seen those reviews, just search on my uh, on my video channel and you'll see reviews of those kits there. And they are stunners. They are absolutely beautiful. Well worth a look. Now this is a kit I've wanted to get for a long, long time. And as you know, I've put out my video about buying um, kits from the Ukraine to promote the modelling community over there. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. And this is the second one I bought. The first one was the ICM um, Benz patent motor bag and this one here and I reviewed that for you yesterday so there we go um, and this one here this is the B14 again for I say for models of it it's in 70 second scale kit number is 72039 and I got this from Dave Coley model emporium so because of that you get a free gift and I got here a lovely pair of cutters and uh, these are ProTech modeling tools and they're Dave Cully, Dave Coley's emporium.co.uk and you can see on there, there's his website address and you can see on the back, that's where you want to get them from. Great service, um, I've ordered two kits from him now, this one and the, uh, the ICM car and um, both have come within um, 48 hours of ordering them so really really good really great or less for less than 48 it's probably about 40 hours because they're ordered in the evening and they come in the morning so um so yeah both times i got these so i've got two pairs of these now so well i've actually got three because he sent me a pair before when i got when i got the um the 225 from him so anyway um this kit basically 414 millimeters long 307 sorry 414 millimeters wingspan 372 millimeters long and 252 parts uh, it's a limited edition kit, but they always say that. They've got that on every box, I think. Um, and they are fairly kind of short run. So we'll enjoy this review, but we have to remember this kit is not really for the beginner. They do need a little bit of extra work. It's not like your um, you know, your modern Airfix kits or your Tamiya. So looking around the box, oh, by the way, this is a 1960s aircraft. Uh, it was developed from the BE-12, which you can also get a range of BE-12s from, uh, from Dave Coley in, in models of it as well. So if you like this kit, go and have a look on this channel. You've got, you've got a few there to choose from. Um, basically, it was developed from the BE-12 as a search and rescue aircraft. It had a great big beacon on it. This is just from what I've read in the instructions. Um, extra doors put in the sides. It's got these drop rescuing things here, which are going to be for the uh, going to be dinghies dropping into the water. And, and basically, it never took off really because it was too expensive so they were just told to modify existing BE-12s instead so um thought I'd get this one because it's a little bit different in it's a, an unusual plane plus back in August 2019 uh, I was at the, the Avon model show in Thornbury and I saw this and I'll put a couple of pictures up now and as soon as I saw this I wanted it so um, there we go. Um, so basically looking around the box, as we can see, catalogue number 72039, and we've got schemes there. There's only one scheme because there's only ever one aircraft. Um, 14 plus, made in Ukraine, and as I say here, distributed by Dave Coley's Emporium. End of the box is just the same old sort of thing with the image on the side. And then here we've got some actual images of the real made up model. And you can see there, it really is a good looking aircraft. It's so ugly, it's beautiful, isn't it? So, um, really, really nice. Love those Russian green wheels. Russian green wheels are always cool. And uh, there we go, you've got the image on the side of the box there, side on. So, looking inside the box, it's a very sturdy, you can see it's, it's very sturdy, uh, and the lid fits very, very snugly. So put that over there out of the way. We've got instructions in here, which are <laughs> glossy, great. Uh, the box is trying to come apart. Just tab back in there and then here all the parts in one bag rattling around in there but I guess they've got their standard box sizes but it's not as bad as some of the Revell kits and at least the box is solid so um, we've got bags within bags so obviously I'm guessing that what they do is export these in a great big box and all these boxes are folded flat that's what I'm guessing so um and as you can see it's got the kit number 72039 on there 
we can see instantly we've got our deco sheets here, we've got some vinyl tyres, we've got clear parts in there. There's a piece of card I can see, I don't know what that is. But um, I haven't had this bag open, I haven't had a look. I had a quick flip through the instructions. So let's have a look at the instructions. Again, I say it's glossy paper, so I'm going to try my best to not have you worrying about reflection and stuff. I'll try and keep the paper angled so that... Um, so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. Trouble is, if I have the lighting so that you get no reflection whatsoever, I just get a load of reflection so I can't see what I'm looking at. Um, so basically, we've got some history about the aircraft there. You can read that. It's in Ukrainian and in English. Okay, so you can freeze frame there and have a read. And we've got down here required paints. They're all called out in Humbrol, so they're easy to convert. And you can see there I've done the conversions in uh, Mr. Colour, LP and Tamiya, sort of dotted around the place so there we go and then here we've got our legend for um for the rest of the model uh, and it says down here model is designed using short road technology designed for experienced modelers as i was saying just now so going into the manual obviously here we've got our sprue call outs and as you can see everything is numbered clearly numbered and you can actually see the numbers and um very nicely done it's sort of drawings rather than 3d models or photographs or whatever but you can see quite a few bits and pieces in there and then we're going over and we've got another lot there so there's lots of pieces we've got a deco sheet here we've got some clear parts down there by the look of it vinyl tires unfortunately but i'm guessing you know maybe we can get some resin ones or something or even make a mold photo etch window masks look how many window masks there are bloody it's covered in glazing isn't it and um so i'm just looking where the clear parts are uh, I guess they must be on the previous page. With all those masks, there must be loads of clear parts. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, okay, I don't know where the clear parts are. Oh, never mind. So, um, into the construction. So, starting off here, building up the seats for the cabin. Uh, they've just got a bit of a difference in one side there. And then adding the seats with the centre console and the joysticks and everything. Uh, and then we've got this little symbol here, which is a, I'll show you close up, which is basically like a page with the bottom corner turned up, you can see there. And that indicates a decal. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six decals going in there. So, you know, quite nice detail right from the get-go. And then we're finishing off the cockpit here, we've got another seat going in there. Um... Not quite sure this area is here, but it'll become clear. Building up the wheels, got some air intakes going on here. And then we're building up our engine nacelles with the exhausts and everything. Got the exhaust halves there. So, and you can see the turbine there on the back of the engine. So, going over the page, we're now into building up the very unusual build sequence. We're now into building up the tailplane. As you can see, we've got the twin tail, just like the Mira. Mira. Maria. <laughs> um, and then we're building up the wings. Uh, undercarriage bays, more undercarriage bay work, and then building up the undercarriage legs themselves. Adding the engines to the wings, and then uh, building up the um, the sponsons or the plantoons, whatever you call them. And then we've got here. Oh, these are the. Um, we're going to make eight of those. These are the chambers they drop with the dinghies or whatever in the rescue, and they're going to be painted in a lovely bright red orange. Uh, and then we're building up the wings there with all those parts. Unusual way of doing things before you actually add them to the fuselage. Then we're going to put the wings together with the big central spar going over there, which is a nice touch. And then we've got all this lovely detail going into the uh, into inside the um, fuselage there. As you can see, fuselage is in three sections. You've got a tail, a mid section, and you've got a nose section down here as well. Uh, that's probably because of all the different variants. Um, and again, we've got lots of decals going in here. You can see down there, lots of decals going in there. And then we've got the tail wheel assembly going together here. That's going in the back. I'm sure that can be left out and added eight later so you don't break it off. Building up the nose assembly. We've got some photo etching there for a, a bench or whatever. Building up the clear canopy there with the clear sides. So we should have nice clear plastic there. Um, and then we're adding, oh, building it all up and making up the main assembly. And then we've got some um, veins going on here. What the word for them would be now, but they're they're going to be sort of to stop the water all coming up around the, and going into the props and everything. Adding our undercarriage. This is undercarriage down. I'm not sure if you get the undercarriage up option, but I'm sure you could uh, work something out. And then uh, building up the propellers here. So 
oh, sorry here yeah, going into the tail gear adding the tail gear doors and the tail wheel building up a, some sort of not quite sure where that's going building up the propellers there there's two of those as you can see the blades are sort of separate but in pairs so you don't have any problems with pitch and then we've got this uh, wiper assembly here we're going to be folding up looks like a wiper assembly folding up from photo etch and then we've got a little something down here which is photo etch and then we've got all our window masks here going on that symbol there with the, the square with the corners chopped out that you can see down there all those window masks hundreds of them <laughs> that's going to be fun let's just hope they all fit and they go all over the page obviously you've only, only got the one option because there was only ever one and again we've got all our humble color call outs here and our different colors you red yellows and oranges and stuff the plane is basically a gray so um and it won't be too weathered because it wasn't ever used i'm not even sure if it still exists i'll have to do some research um and there we go so we've got our lovely green wheels and um we've got some beautiful orange bits there dropping off the wings and everything and then you've got the red flash which is going to look great so there we are, that's the instructions let's have a look at the plastic as i say plastic comes all in one bag and they're all these um ziplock bags if i can get that open so they must have a huge stash of these and models of it because i remember the blue the purple flashing across the top from my 225 and 124 so that bag can go over there out of the way so we've got a separate bag here we've got our decals in here so let's have a look at these let's see what they're like so nice and thoughtfully packaged keeping them separate so we've got the the stars there obviously the colors are looking great they are very very thin the carrier film is some of the thinnest I've ever seen. I'm going to see if I can get you to see it. But if you look around this 14, that is basically in a square. I don't know if you can see the carrier film there. If I can catch it in the light. There you go. That is really thin. They're going to be very fragile, I think. Um, and also, if you notice, when you look at the stars, there's no carrier film around the edge of the stars. And there's no carrier film on the edge of these stripes either. Unless it's, I'm just wondering if it's one sheet. No, they are separate decals. Sometimes with older kits, you get that the whole decal is just one sheet. But um, we can see all those little decals there for the instrument panel and the centre console and everything. We've got some stenciling here, along with our major stripes and stars. So nothing too much to go on there, but um, they do look very, very nice. They do look lovely. I don't, I don't know what these circles are for. It's white. It's white. You can see them now. There's white ovals and white circles. Not quite sure what they're for. All will become clear when it's built, I'm sure. So we get that back in its bag. Keep it dry and uh, away from moisture. So we've got a pair of fuselage halves there. So we've got a bag here and then we've got smaller sprues here in separate bags. So let's start off by having a look at these fuselage halves. So first of all, are these warped? Are they nice and straight? Do they go together lovely? They go together lovely and they're not hardly warped at all. So there we are, very nice, great big bits of flash to get off of there. So obviously the 14 has this separate, this part of the fuselage is different because it's got BE14 moulded onto it. But um, it's nice plastic, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. We've got some nice engraved detail on there, which looks fairly sharp. Um, obviously, like I say, it's short run. You don't have sort of location pins and everything to locate it all together. But uh, but it is very, very nice. It's, um, you know, the, the scribe detail is carrying on underneath as well. It's not sort of fading out and it's going over the top as well. It's not fading out. So, um, yeah, be very, very nice. Can't see any short shots and there's no real flash to speak of for a short run kit. It's very, very good. Um, like I say, it ain't no Tamiya, but, uh, you know, you can see there it's um, goes together lovely. That's our fuselage halves. Interior detail, we've got some ribbing in there, but it's nice to see. And we do have a slight amount of shrinkage on the outside. Nothing a quick sack, swipe with a sand and stick won't sort. It's nothing like that Roden um, AN12 I've got. But uh, 
yeah very nice happy with that so we've got this bag here which is our major bag with all the bigger parts in it so in here we've got yet another bag so in here we have tires and clear parts so let's have a look in here let's have a look at what we've got in here so here we have okay a small sprue of clear parts and they're they're pretty nice nice and clear not all foggy like I was expecting them to be and then we've got the photo etch there it looks like it's, it's either plated plated brass or it's stainless steel but it's a very small photo etch fret but uh, nonetheless it's there you've got some parts there which is nice got these tiny little wiper blades and stuff and on the back here we've got the masks which look very much like Montex or the old Edward type so it looks like they're probably vinyl so that's a nice touch nice that they come in the box and then we've got tires here which are vinyl let's have a look at them they've obviously got tread on them they they have a smell I can't tell what it is but they've actually got tire letting on them as well so they've got tire lettering and tread and there's hardly any seam around the middle so for vinyl tires they're very nice but you can see on there if I can just catch it in like you can see we've got some lettering on there and the tread is uh, is lovely very nice indeed so that's those so they're probably usable I would suggest giving the wheels a good gloss coat to protect them in case this starts to effect or they start to go funny or whatever and then we've got these clear parts here which are they're lovely actually they're really really nice I was expecting because the 124 I've got the clear parts aren't that nice they're, if anything they're the kits let down but these look absolutely fine you can see they're they're not up to your um you know your Tamiya standards whatever there is a bit of bit of fogging on there but I would imagine with a dip in some crystal clear they'd be perfect but they are really really nice and I'm not sure what they're like for distortion we'll put this deco sheet behind and we can see yeah there's a little bit of distortion there but I don't think you're going to see much of this anyway what you're going to have is this front area and the sides and then here the nose is completely molded in clear which is a great touch because otherwise if they did it in the grey plastic you had all those little windows separate you can imagine all the horrible seams and joins you'd have but just having it like that all in clear you can mask it off and then you get perfect seam lines around all your windows so um yeah really pleased with that very nice indeed and then we've got another sprue of clear parts here this is all our little windows and everything and again you know it's not sort of tamiya standards but it's um they're lovely nonetheless and as i say give them a dip who's going to uh who's ever going to notice so we'll put those to one side i'm going to put them in some separate bags because they were just in there together and they could get scratched quite easily so i'll put them to one side and sort that after and then in the rest of the bag we got some sprues here so this is our you can see on there we've got some oil so it's all going to have to have get a good wash you can see there was some oil on there so um all nicely done again very sharp this is our tail section so obviously this is different than the 12 as well because that's got 14 on it so that's going to basically go you can see we've got oil down on there as well so um basically we're going to have to give this a good wash that's going to go together like so so you can see it is not a small airplane for a 70 second scale it is not a small aircraft when you've got the nose going on here as well so um it's a big old brute and nice to see they've got the wing center section there so you've got your dihedral and everything sorted for you and that's just going to sit in the top of the fuselage i can't try it in there because we've got those bits in the way but um yeah nice surface detail on there we've got the raised areas for the hinges for the tailwheel doors which is very nice again a little bit of detail inside the tailwheel area but nothing uh, nothing too much but nothing nothing more or less than most other manufacturers would give you and again nice fine surface detail so all in all quite lovely and then we've got our tailplane here very much like Maria and uh, 
Really, really nice. Nice to see they've moulded the elevators in one. See the trailing edge is, is taken care of for you. So you've got a nice thin trailing edge without having to worry about it. And then we've got that looks like the nose bulge there. And we've got some other bits and pieces here. I'm guessing there might be stuff in here you won't use because it's probably shared with the BE12. A little bit of flash on there, nothing too much. That's what we got knives for, isn't it? And then here we've got our engines. These are the uh, outer engine casings. Engine, engine nacelles, if you like. And they're all nice. Again, we've got some raised and recessed detail on them. Which is very beautifully done. And then here we've got tail planes, cockpit floor, or is that, um, no, that doesn't have nose gear. That probably is cockpit floor. We've got some bulkheads here and a seat. And uh, again, tail planes, rudders are actually molded as one, you can see. So the trailing edge is taken care of for you, which is a really nice touch. This has been made by modelers, I think. This is like one of those wing nut wings kits where it's made by modelers for modelers. They know what we want. And uh, very nice indeed, very crisp, fine detail. Just just fine enough, you know, fine, fine enough. It's probably over scale, most panel lining is. Um, but it's fine enough to take a wash, but not so fine you're going to lose it under a coat of primer. So it's a, it's a lovely compromise. And then here we've got some wings. So these are going to be our lower wings by the look of it. And then we've got our floats here. What are they called? You can tell me in the comments below. Uh, they, they go under the wings on the ends and they're obviously, yeah. And then here again, the trailing edge is taken care of because it's moulded in as one piece. So this is the lower wing section. So that's going to go in there like that. Yeah, so beautifully done. All you've got is a panel line there to deal with, but nicer than having to deal with a, trying to get a fine trailing edge. So, uh, yeah. Again... Lovely surface detail on there. Really nice, really, really nice. I'm just wondering, is that the bottom or is that the top? Sorry, that is the top. The engines actually sling over the wings, obviously to keep them out of the water. So um, that is the top. So that's the underside of the wing. So the, don't worry, the actual join you've got to deal with there is on the underside. But I mean, you glue that together, brush the Mr. Servicer down there, quick swipe with the sanding stick, you'll never know it was there. And then you've got your nice sharp trailing edge there already moulded in for you. And uh, of course we have that lovely kick in the wings as well. So you've got that lovely sort of gold wing look. Which is really nice. So there we go. So that's that one. And then finally we've got this bag here which has got all our little baby sprues in. I think models of it must have a lot of very small moulding machines. Because if you look at the 225 and the 124 there, it's just bags and bags of tiny sprues. And um, these tiny sprues, you just need a tiny machine to mould them. So you have a mould tool about this big. Okay, so you have a mould tool about that big that will come out of. And all you need is a small moulding machine with a small platen. So that's low tonnage, less floor space, less energy used. And um, very, very nice as well because you can, uh, the smaller the tool, the easier it is to get really nice clean results. When you've got great big tools, you've got large areas where flash can here and everything. I used to work with injection moulding so I kind of know a little bit about it. I don't know everything. But um, here we've got our little, uh, these are our little things. What do they call them? Um, dum -dum 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 -dum. Drop rescue containers. There we go. Drop rescue containers. So I'm assuming they've got dinghies in them and stuff for food and water. So uh, we've got some pylons for them there. And then we've got another one there exactly the same. And then we've got a searchlight here by the look of it. I don't quite know where that's going to go. But we can see we've got some lovely sharp detail on there. The only thing I'm noticing here, where you've got this intake, you can see that the, the ends are hollowed out lovely. So um, when you glue it together, you'll have a nice thin hollowed out edge. And then moving forward is another sprue. And this is wheels, by the look of it. So that's the inner face and that's the outer face of the wheels. That looks like the tail gear door tail gear doors, you've got your tail wheel gear here, uh, tail wheel bay by the look of it. So that's basically all in the carriage. And then we've got some little uh, little arms there, I'm assuming, assuming those little arms are going to be for the, um, for the gear doors. So 
they're very nice. Then we've got here, this is an undercarriage base. We've got some lovely plumbed in pipe work there. So that's going to look great with a little bit of a wash and a, a dry brushing. Um, then we've got more panel work here. I'm guessing this is all for the undercarriage. And then we've got the same here for the other side. So we've got a left and we've got a right. And you can see on here it says BE12. So you can see that the where the planes derived from. So that's they're very nice. You can see the detail in there. Really nice. What you could do is come along and scrape in the behind with a blade and make those appear more round, but they are they are extremely finely moulded. Beautifully done. And if you notice as well, I don't know where the manufacturers can't do it. You noticing what I'm talking about? There are no ejector pin marks. None. So if Molesvik can do it, why can't everyone else? There are no ejector pin marks on there whatsoever. So here we've got the well, this is the cockpit floor, so I don't know what that panel was we saw before. Um there's two halves of the centre console. We've got our instrument panel here. And that's going to be the nose section there. We've got some seat parts here. So yeah, a little sink on the headrest, but that might just add to the effect of the, the cushion. We can see the, the detail on there. You know, for a 70 second scale kit, absolutely fine. Very nice indeed. It would look quite nice part with a Nimrod actually, this wouldn't it? Similar sort of thing. Oh, I'll shut up, they're nothing like each other at all, are they? Again, we can see here we've got BE12. So that's left and that's right. So it's obviously the end sprue and it's left and right. But this is all our undercarriage. And you can see very finely moulded, hardly any seams to deal with. And again, no ejector pin marks. None. Lovely moulded models of it sign there. So, all very nice indeed. Pretty sturdy legs. Look, they're going to take the weight, no problem. And then we've got another little one here with some antenna and greeblies and pitos and air intakes and all sorts of little bits and pieces on there. God knows what any of them are. But um, you can see you've got control sticks there with the wheels. Uh, more interior detail by the look of it. But lovely. You know, it's like I say, it's all crisp and sharp and really, really nice. They say it's short run, but uh, it's bloody lovely to me. And then here's this sprue here. This is sprue H. And here we've got our first bits of flash. There we go. We've got some flash on there. A little bit of flash around the back of the uh, spinner. But we've got propeller blades there, moulded in pairs. We've got exhausts. Okay. So trumpeter... Tamiya, Airfix, all of you, all of you manufacturers, this is an exhaust, okay? It could be an intake, and it has no ejector pin marks in it. So if models of it can do it, why can't you guys? Look, nothing in there at all. Glue them together, it's just going to be a seam to take care of. Can you imagine if they could do that on the intake of, a, of an F-18 or an F-16 or, you know... Uh, a Su-27. No ejector pin marks. Wouldn't it be lovely? <laughs> so there we go. So that's very, very nice. And then we've got this one here. And that one's basically the same. So um, it's even got the same flash on it. There you go. So very, very nice indeed. So all in all, I'm very pleased. I'm very, very pleased with my purchase. I think it was £45 um, from Dave Cody. As I say, there are three, four or five variants of the BE-12. They're all made by models of it and they all basically look the same. There's a, there is a lovely, if you like your red and white, there's a lovely sort of red and very light grey one. With, you know, um, you'll like that one if that's, if that's your sort of thing. But uh, go take a look, BE-12, um, over at Dave Coley's Emporium and, uh, and go and get yourself one and, uh, and support, support the um, Ukrainian model, model manufacturers as well. So there's the kit there, just for a re recap, that's the kit there, BE14, limited edition from Models of It, cat number 72039. I would 
thoroughly recommend this kit. It's lovely. And there we go, just have one final look at that. Isn't it? Bloody, look at it. It is so ugly. It's beautiful. <laughs> Bye for now, guys. See you maybe, well, it won't be tomorrow because it'll be Sunday. I'll see you on Monday. We'll have another review. I've got some more Ukrainian kits coming on Monday. Bye for now.